to all of you above me that watch over me, to all of you, my fave pair of peeps on this side of the veil, welcome. This is Reverend Sean Whittington's Paranormal Ministry. I'm your host, Reverend Sean the Rev, and welcome to my haunted home, my very haunted home. And it's Friday the 13th, and I have... The only person I could think of in the world, and I love her to death, to have here as a guest on Friday the 13th, and I'm going to bring her on shortly, and you guys are going to love her. But where do I want to start with you guys? Let's check the prayer urn and look. There's nobody in the prayer urn. Well, that is a large lock of hair in the prayer urn. And that will make a uh, very interesting story, which I will say for another show. But the reason why there is no names in the prayer urn uh, this today is because I reached out to everybody all day yesterday and all last night that was in there and prayed with them in person to take care of them and get them um, taken care of and out of the way. Because I wanted to, today being Friday the 13th, I decided I wanted to offer up the opening prayer to each and every one of you, my paranormal ministry family, my guest, my producer, everyone within the sound of my voice. It is a wonderful prayer uh, to the Virgin Mary, and it's very simple, guys. Where the Virgin Mary is present, the devil is absent. So I'm going to say this prayer for each and every one of you. If you want to add some love and light to it or receive some love and light from it, just reach out, touch your computer screen, close your eyes and bow your head. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection implored thy help, or sought thy intercession, was left unaided. Inspired with this confidence, I fly unto thee, O Virgin of virgins, my mother. To thee do I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer me. Amen. May the Holy Spirit enter and intervene in the lives of every one within the sound of my voice, especially on this Friday the 13th. And I've got some trivia for that. Not such a bad date uh, as you would think. And we'll go over that, a little bit of that today. If there's anything you want to know about my wife and I and our ministry work, go to our website, www ghost-b-gone.biz. And if you go to the website to visit, I know times are tough. We've all been through it. But my wife and I don't charge for our ministry work, helping people with their paranormal issues. So if you notice the donate button and you're able to do so, click on it and send a small donation in. I promise you it'll be appreciated from the bottom of our hearts. And it will be put to good use, I assure you. In addition to being an ordained exorcist, I'm also a certified spiritual advisor, intuitive coach. If you have issues of a spiritual nature not necessarily attached to the paranormal and you would like to make an appointment to speak to the Rev, you can do that there at the website. But don't leave the website without navigating back over to the page called the WSE course slash book. And on that page, you'll find the ghost store. In the ghost store, you'll find cool stuff like this awesome throwback ghostbegone.biz coffee cup, T-shirts, hats, hoodies, Paracon bags, you name it, if you go for that sort of stuff. But more importantly, scroll down a little bit further, you'll run into my new haunted autobiography. Just got a new shipment in, so I've got some here in the house. Those may come haunted, buyer beware, but you can also get them at Amazon. And I quote, the scariest book I ever published. That was Annette Munich, owner of Stellium Books, my publisher. But don't let that scare you off of buying a copy. I like to refer to the book as a very different kind of feel-good story. A lot of good versus evil were good wins. But the best part is, 
part of the proceeds of every sale of every copy of my book goes to support St. Jude, St. Jude, excuse me, St. Jude.org and St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital, Nevada. And that is a beautiful thing. And I recently added something new to that. I've been in the animal care industry most of my adult life. So my wife and I recently added the ASPCA to that. So you get to help the animals a little bit too. Scroll down a little bit further, you'll see the Worldwide Society of Exorcists, which I am a founding member. I offer a 12-week online college-level course, Introduction to Spiritual Warfare, through the WSE. And that is a course for all of you warriors for Christ out there that are feeling a calling to want to have more knowledge when it comes to knowing how to draw your line in the sand, circle the wagons, make a stand, put up a good fight against, God forbid, true evil if it ever comes calling. That's the course for you. I'm not going to teach you how to be an exorcist. That's an entirely, that's a, that's a calling in itself. And uh, you won't get that during the course. But all of my students that graduate get a stunning diploma, along with some other very special blessed gifts that you can only get from yours truly, the Rev. So you can enroll in the course there, or you can go to the Worldwide Society of Exorcists Facebook page and read more about the course if you're interested, but you want to know a little bit more first. Most importantly, please keep all of my former, current, and future students in your prayers. Okay, guys, here she comes. Fasten your seat belts. You're all invited to be part of the show. We have the chat here monitored by my producer, Adrian Hart. If you throw a question at me or my guest, it'll pop up. We will try to address it as quickly as possible. I've known this woman for a long time. I love her dearly. I don't know anybody like her. She is an American high priestess, lineage-initiated witch, black ops baby, ascended watcher, critically acclaimed author, radio, TV, and film personality. Please welcome to the show the one and only Solaris Blue Raven. Solaris, are you with us today? I am, and thank you very much for having me, Sean, Reverend Sean. It's been great <laughs> just listening to your prayer. I love you. I love you, you too. want to get that out of the you way. You know that. You, you know that. So, I know you do. You look so pretty <laughs> today. Um, oh, what do I want to ask you? I want to ask you some personal things first. Not too personal, but some personal things before I get to some of the questions your fans and followers have sent in. The last year and a half, everybody wishes we could wave a magic wand and have a do-over. I don't think, I think it's far from over. You, I, I know you are probably on, on board with that. Um, I, I don't want to start the show with a downer, but I think there's still some ugly times ahead of us. But how have you held up the past year and a half with the pandemic, with the virus, everyone close to you that you love? How's everyone doing? How's your sister doing? She's so sweet. She's doing great. Uh, thank you for asking. And everybody's doing well enough. I mean, they've they've been able to navigate through this particular uh, situation, shall we say. I could call it other things. But I, I would say I've done okay. I, I started getting more creative. Bottom line, I started seeing what was going on. I just decided to do more writing. Uh, the biggest thing that I think I missed out on was more activity, physical activity, because everything was shut down. So that part was kind of a bummer. But other than that, things were okay. However, you know, you look at the ominous presence of what's happening here, and there is kind of a strange energy circulating across the globe as you probably pick up on and and that is in my opinion will probably be with us for several years oh my gosh um yeah i i am on board with you on that one and um let me ask you this one you're a witch i'm a reverend i get people all the time to reach out to me and go because you're not the only friend <laughs> i have who's a witch i have many mm -hmm. friends i have friends in all walks of life uh religious belief systems the only people that I don't really associate with are the ones that I know have perverted it and turned it into something ugly, and they're they're, they're doing bad things with it towards right. towards people. Uh, you're you're definitely not one of those people. But I have to ask. I know you are part of a couple of very large covens. Mm -hmm. I've gone to the Facebook pages of both your covens. I love the pages. Um, I'm a big believer in the power of prayer. I know that. Um, some of the religious groups that I associate with, we're constantly sending out these mass emails where we say, okay, for the next two weeks, everybody say these five prayers before you go to bed, these five prayers when you wake up, 
and be diligent about it for the next month. We're trying to stop this or stop that. Um, I And I could be wrong, correct me here. I find that very coven-like in, this, in terms of, I know, I assume covens do much of the same thing where you guys are praying to either you know, the great father or the great mother or mother earth or the elementals or whatever to, uh, to try and combat evil and ugliness and things of that nature. I could be totally off base here. Correct me if I'm wrong, but how does that work with, with, um, the types of covens and the type of work that you do behind the scenes? No, it works the same way you do actually. And on a lot of different levels, we are always connecting in with higher energies, divine source, creator or source energetics to, uh, to assist in whatever we can do to help this world on, on various levels. Uh, I would say a lot of different covens do their own particular, you know, ceremony, ritual, or you want to call it and bring in positive forces to assist in, in doing what they can here on the timeline. So I have seen that going on. And then one thing that I would like to mention also is that you're right about as far as some, some craft practitioners out there, what, has, what I have noticed with the witchcraft community in general is that it's been hijacked a lot. And um, we just have to be real about it. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I'm not your atypical practitioner from witchcraft from other witches you might encounter. Very different. And I've also been initiated into a lot of different things, which are more mystery school, which is a very high frequency, high consciousness, um, divine energetics. Which, but, but these um, particular people that I've seen and noticed have been more in uh, the darker side of things. And, and that to me, I bring up because it has been hijacked. But for the most part, um, those of us who do connect into to the purity of the earth consciousness energies. For me, I bring in divine creation. I bring in similar th- forces that you bring in. So I'm bringing in those divine forces to assist in doing what we can here for shielding, protection, healing, awakening, enlightenment, and, and di- diverting the negatives. So, you know, that's what we do. I have to ask you this. Do you ever, um, I, I know a lot of uh, very gifted. I, f- I feel that they're the real deal and they're very gifted psychic mediums. Many people in my field not only wouldn't be sitting here talking to a witch, but they also wouldn't have uh, much to do with psychics. You know me, I'm, I'm a lover, not a fighter. Uh, I welcome everybody into my world. Do you, um, when I hear some of these psychics talk about tapping into source energy, I get many different explanations towards that. And I'm going through a phenomena right now where a lot of people are reaching out to me, being visited in the middle of the night by a variety of different types of entities. And some of these encounters are violent. Some are very sexual. Some take them off into other worlds and show them things. But what is, how would you describe the particular source energy that you tap into? Mm -hmm. Um, Right. Yeah, for me, it's, it's just full light, universal energies. It's creation of all things. There are father creation, mother creator, same concept of what you probably think of a different terminology. But, you know, creator source is the divine energetics behind who we are, our origins, our cosmic origins, and our spiritual origins. And that's what I connect in with, with the full light universe and creator source, divine creation. Uh, I do know that, like I said, terminology has been hijacked over the years. Words have been hijacked. Symbols have been hijacked. And it depends on the person and their purity of heart, in my opinion. It's kind of like Excalibur. Only so many people can pull the sword. And those of us who have the pure intent, the pure state of consciousness, regardless of the path they walk, whatever they are into, as long as their heart is in the right place in their consciousness, they can dial in correctly. At least that has been my experience. Somebody just sent me a crazy article the other night. I haven't had a chance to fact check it or research it, but it talked about some gentleman that... uh, he came forth to some organization claiming to be uh, from way into the future. And he's come back to warn us that there's several different alien species out there that are planning to start a war Mm -hmm. either with us or make us start a war here amongst ourselves or something like that. I know that on every, in every dimension, every level, I know that there's good and bad everywhere. So I have to believe, and I do believe that in my heart of hearts, that there's good extraterrestrials. And I don't, I don't even like to call them that because I believe there is much, they've always been here. I believe they're as much a part of this world as we are. We are like cavemen to them. And I, I don't even know why they would want to have anything to do with us. But I have to believe there's something there that's ready to help us. Mm-hmm. And I think the time has come. Why in, in your 
as best you can answer, why do you think, and maybe they are helping, but why do you think they just don't come out and these particular ones come out and help us? We need help right now. Agreed. Well, you know our Cosmic Origins. My book, I don't know if I gave you a copy. I'll send you one. Alien Intelligence covers the DNA code and who we are as cosmic beings. In other words, the, the original uh, quote, quote unquote visitors were ancestors of the visitors. So we are descendants of the celestial star beings, whatever you want to call them. Uh, you can call them light beings and a lot of other things. But in my opinion, we are here. You're here. You're walking the timeline. Uh, many of us are here as extensions to them, them as a species, as a celestial divine energetic representing that cosmic design. I also know that if you really put your intention into the cosmic design, you will get reinforcements. And you know this from your own your own spirituality and your own faith that you get reinforcements when you need them. You call in the big guns and you get that energetic. It's the same thing with the cosmos. But I would say be careful because there are tricksters as we all know. And a lot of people who are claiming this, um, I've seen more things in psychological operations and covert warfare departments that mimic extraterrestrials to convince me that anything that's harmful that's coming in would be something they've engineered or reverse engineered. And that's just me. And we're going in a different spiral. My point is that um, from what my experience has been with off-world celestial design, it's been very positive, very loving. Uh, it has not hurt, hurt me in any formula. Uh, I can't say that about other things in the past. So that's where I stand with it. Oh my gosh. You and I, uh, one hour is not long enough with you. And I know <laughs> I that know. you and I could go into so many, so many different things. And you and I earlier talked about, uh, in the green room before we went live that I've already had uh, not only YouTube, but I've had Facebook take off a couple of my shows. Cause I had guests that uh, just, they spoke their mind and, and they got, uh, some of them got a little uh, real deep into some conspiracy theories about, especially the vaccine and things of that nature. And so I, I get it. You know, I don't uh, complain. I don't argue. Maybe people, some people have said, no, you should complain. You should argue. That's wrong. I know it is, but you know, I, I just want to move on. You know, if they, they take something down, they take it down. So I want you to feel free to talk about anything you want to talk about. And if they, you know, they take it down, they take it down, but. Well, I don't think they um, will. I mean, it's a professional background. It's not something I've just fabricated. So, you know, my, my, my assessment is provable. My technology where I've been is provable. So, you know, it's not something that's fantasy oriented or conspiracy. It's literally, I can show them the science. They always want the science. I can show them the science. Talk to me about the new book. I'm hearing great things. And uh, give me, give me, um, take as long as you want. Talk to us about your inspiration, uh, what went into writing the book. Um, if anything, sometimes odd things happen to me when I get to writing, if any of that occurred or what you want pe people that are like on the fence and about to reach out there and grab it, what they can expect from the latest from Solaris Blue Raven. Well, thank you. Um, alien intelligence came about just by my own research and my own experience. I went through the dark corridors of covert technology and warfare, as you know, synthetic telepathy and the type of psychotronic projections and things I've been through. So I, I went into a different area because of my state of consciousness. I realized who we are as multidimensional beings, as cosmic beings, as spiritual beings, that we're infinite, that we come from the stars, we go home to the stars. And with that comes this book, Alien Intelligence, which is really about everybody seeking where's the extraterrestrial. Well, we are the celestial design. I call it extraterrestrial. We are the these beings. We are entered onto a timeline. We incarnate here. We do many things here, but we are extensions of that. So that once again, prime source, source energy, creator source, the cosmic design. And it covers a lot of that in the book in the sense of that, the DNA code, how the frequency of the DNA is um, altered through your state of consciousness, how you can access uh, what we call full Akashic records and many different types of information to, uh, to, obtain what you need. In other words, all the data codes are in there within your own cellular structures. It's a matter of accessing. And I cover a lot of these different areas. Also the components behind um, beyond time travel, which means how do we get from point A to point B? It's usually through states of consciousness and frequency. I talk about uh, different uh, technologies connected to phase shifting by location. It gets kind of scientific, but it also goes into the uh, aspects of who we really are as starvings because for so long, people want to wonder, they wonder, they wonder, but they don't know who they are. I don't think people know themselves. And, and that's a real deep journey, uh, as you probably know. You go win many, many levels, many corridors, and you get to one corridor and you go to the next. So that's where this kind of grew and evolved. I hear great things. And I saw I was stalking you uh, a little bit the past week to, to prepare for this interview today. And I should know better because I just get blown away. And then I just decide, well, just sit down with her and who knows where the conversation will go. Um, I saw a picture of you at, uh, a, I believe it was UFO con. 
Oh yeah, it was in San Francisco. Yeah, that was right before the shutdown. Right before the shutdown, and yeah. oh my God, how in just since that time. Well, what did the city look like to you when it was there, when you were there? And I know right now it's probably a completely different city in just a year and a half. Right. When I went out there, I was going, I actually did my presentation to Alien Intelligence, which was well received, by the way, at the UFO Con in San Francisco. And I was concerned I wasn't going to get back. I mean, because they were just about ready to yeah. shut everything down. I kept saying, I don't want to go because I have a feeling I'm not going to be able to get back on the plane. You know, all the weird was starting to happen. But I just went ahead and did it anyway. And I'm really glad I did. But uh, out there, people were very friendly. They weren't paranoid. They were smiling and hugging, and uh, everybody was having a great time. Uh, everybody was very positive, and, and I'll remember that. That was a really good experience. And then, of course, getting back, it was more ominous. It's like you come back to Mordor. I feel like I live in Mordor sometimes. And, and then all of a sudden, the iron umbrella comes through, and, and all the strange starts to happen. So a lot of people living in fear is what I've seen after that UFO conference. From It went from positivity. Everybody's in unity consciousness. They're excited about even if it's just talking about the universe and spirit and whatever, um, good, good energy, good energy. And then all of a sudden it converts itself and contorts itself into something fear and, and a distraction. Like everybody's being pulled away from truth, from consciousness, from light. And I saw that going on. So that's, that's what I can say from an assessment point. Uh, but I love the food out there. And I must say, I love seafood. So, you know, every day was fish and chips and that sort of thing. Uh, there's no better, you know, I was born and raised in, um, Northern California, and mm -hmm. I moved back east to uh, to Cold Snake, New Jersey, at a very young age, and then back to Southern California, like uh, elementary school time, third, fourth grade around there. But the, every time I've been to San Francisco, you can't help but fall in love with the city. Mm -hmm. But right now, I talk to friends that live there; they go, "You you wouldn't recognize the place now." Agreed. And uh, it's just a shame. LA's the same. It's just a yeah. shame. Uh, and Colorado's York, the same too. Boulder is getting really weird. All the nice little areas, the little magical spots, uh, are just getting contaminated with with a lot of negativity. I would say, from your perspective, probably entity controlled and worse. And also, just just this uh, perpetual homelessness that I've never seen before. I've never seen so many homeless people in my life. That oh are just gosh. everywhere. Yeah, my wife just went to run an errand from the animal hospital we work at to like one of the oldest animal hospitals that have been here in town. And they've got their own s supply room where, you know, if you can't get something online, if you have an in there, you can go and get some supplies there. And it's right smack dab in the middle of Vegas. And she was just there two weeks ago. Nothing showed up. And there's like a strip mall that's uh, been closed down probably since the shutdown last year, St. Patrick's Day around that time. Mm -hmm. She said that whole strip mall and the parking lot and everything has turned into a homeless tent city. Mm -hmm. um, I was walking down the street the other day and a girl that I don't even know, I don't know if she was homeless. I don't know if she was just drugged out. I don't know. But I'm I'm I wear uh, at work all black scrubs. So still mm -hmm. very, there's a little bit of a priestish look to it and I've had a, I was wearing a crucifix and uh she's just staring at me as like she walks by me on the street. Now this is a young girl, doesn't mm -hmm. know me, but as she gets right next to me, she turns, she yelled in my ear so loud, my ear actually went like it felt like it went partially deaf for a moment. She yelled at me, Jesus isn't real. And I just thought to myself, I turned and I just threw a I almost pulled out the holy holy water and started blasting. Say. <laughs> I threw a, um, um, I threw a sign of the cross at her and just said a prayer for her, prayer for her and kept walking. You're right; it's that ugliness and mm -hmm. creepiness is everywhere now, and it's just um, it's yeah. pretty it's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we we really need help right now. Um, I always whenever I think of you. I always think of two things that you helped me with a lot. One was I was going through a string of alleged demonic possessions, which were so unlike typical demonic possessions that you opened my eyes and introduced me to this could be government behind that. I mean, do you think that's mm -hmm. something we can talk about without getting the... Sure. I don't think you'll get flagged. <laughs> <laughs> talk to me about that because that was... Uh, some of them cases 
I was never able to bring closure to, probably mm-hmm. because one, I didn't have you right there by my side to help me battle. I think you and I would make a phenomenal team. Um, I'm happy to help but, you anytime. You know that. I and then I that. also from <laughs> from <laughs> that story go into you helped me with those weird paranormal drive-bys I was having here at the house, which also were not traditional. Um, I know why I didn't reach out to you. It's the same reason why I try to sneak out and do cases without Sharon, because I still feel a little shell-shocked from her going through her demonic attack. I love you. And that's why oh, I just mean now I don't have a team anymore. I love you, Because too. I got it's tired okay. of um, putting people in a position where I felt responsible for them and i didn't want mm-hmm. to be responsible for dragging them into the darkness but then i was having those uh dry, paranormal drive-bys here and i had a very gifted psychic reach out to me said that you had relatives back in the day that were part of the witch hunts mm-hmm. and you have relatives that uh put many of them to death and this is the the um spirit uh, uh transgenerational spirit of one of these witches that is for lack of a better term still very pissed off at you and your family and you said oh i can help i can help you with that so talk about this government behind these alleged you know what may appear as a possession and then go into maybe you can a little bit about these um you know uh, curses uh Mm -hmm. I, i i i feel that was a curse uh, that well, maybe it's been put on my family from way back in the day. You can clear that. I've talked to you about that before. You know, I, I don't know if you know this or not. We've had discussions, but my ancestors came over on the Mayflower and they um, were the part of the Brewsters, you know? So I understand lineage and weird that goes on with that. <laughs> well, my point, um, getting into the, the types of warfare programs that I'm familiar with, when it, you're dealing with people who look like they're electronically, or what I call, you say, they're like demonically possessed, that can be mimicked through demonic possession through electronic possession, which means it's an electronic interface. Uh, they can literally do a, an electronic brain link where they can interconnect a person, a target of interest into and onto this program where they can give them commands and remote control them. They can actually create almost like a channeling where they're creating neural linguistics so they can look like they're possessed in verbiage, the way they're talking, and also create disorientation to a point where they look bipolar or schizophrenic. And that's, you know, targeted individuals come to mind because that's a real big thing that's been going on for decades and decades and it's never been addressed in Congress or DC. Very critical that they do, but they never will. But that certainly mimics this type of thing you're describing. So when people are getting this kind of strange behavioral pattern all of a sudden, and it mimics so much of that kind of demonic thing. You have to ask: Is this is this technology, or is this you know some kind of demonic demonic force there? And I would say it could be either or. And and depending on what you're doing in your assessments is how you can figure out where they're coming from. Sometimes it's about people they're familiar with, or they had a connection to governments or officials or anybody high profile can kind of put them on the list for being targeted to some degree. Other times, it's just being in the bad a bad place at the bad time and the wrong place at the wrong time and all these other things that connect in. But it's technologically driven and it can uh, create all kinds of schisms in the brain. It can be very damaging and it's harder to disable because it's technologically linked. And that's something, you know, when I went through the synthetic telepathy, I was able to kind of navigate and alchemically change that. But most people get hit with like tar- targeted individuals very, very difficult. So I'd say that's probably um, one of the things that if, as an exorcist, as a priest, look at all the components. Is this going to be something that's more organic or is this something technological? And I would definitely start looking at those avenues because more and more nowadays, especially with our aerial warfare, we're getting more technological hits where people are getting electronically uh, influenced. And there's just, you know, if you're not connected to spirit, if you have divine Christ, whatever force that lives in you, creator God, and you get hit with something and you're empty to begin with, you're just going to be taken over. It's going to be cloned. You're not going to have anything there because there's no divine force to fight it. And that's what I've noticed with some of these technological interface projects. Does everything that you just said, does it have anything to do with some of these stories that are coming out now where these government officials and CIA people and that are talking about being hit with these? Sure. uh, What is that? Oh, directed energy weapons. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. They say they're getting hit with directed energy weapons, but it's not anything can you're connected to the synthetic telepathy or the electronic brain links I'm familiar with. I think it's more about aerial warfare and it's kind of hitting their electromagnetic field and creating vertigo and, and kind of strange symptoms, but it's not hardcore. However, it is. Uh, it can be devastating. Apparently, they're having some brain injury from that. So, yeah, that's aerial warfare. That's directed energy weapons done remote. And in my opinion, you know, the funny thing is these organizations are notorious for deploying electronic warfare and things that connect into interfacing the brain and destroying people's brainwave activity. And this is damaging. It can it can make people a vegetable or it can help you on a more transhumanism level. Depends how they dial it in, how they flip the switch. 
But yeah, it's out there. And anybody who thinks that's conspiracy, just look at the patents. It's it's not conspiracy in any formula. Oh, it's no, real not, stuff. Not at all. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now these uh, government, uh, these organizations, secret organizations that are able to uh, get a person to present as though they're possessed, but it's can they can they be also somewhat working together with the demonic? That's a great question. I'd say, yeah, they might have some contracts deep down. I mean, I don't discount anything. I think people who deploy that kind of technology, first of all, are definitely not connected to creator source or anything that's positive and divine. Uh, secondly, people who get interconnected, I think they're empty vessels to begin with. So they could have some kind of kind of underlying current connected to something that's not necessarily evolved or ascended demonic comes to mind or, or you know, I look at demons as neutral kind of spirits, but I would say definitely anything evil constructs, the, the satan comes to mind, the, the thought form, uh, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's, scary, it's scary weaponizing stuff. the supernatural. You know, it's weaponizing the paranormal, the supernatural. So when you go in a regular, you know, uh, exploration or uh, do an assessment on something, you're, you're dealing with technology sometimes that's amplifying the situation and making it far more different and anomalous than you would just a regular scan, just a regular house scan. And that's what's happening more and more. Uh, it's very scary stuff. It's scary, and it's scary the fact stuff. that they're deploying it, they don't seem to care. They don't care if they're hurting people, destroying people's lives, uh, making them almost zombies. They don't seem to. They don't seem to care. Well, today is Friday the thirteenth. I remember growing up, and uh, you know, I was in Catholic schools probably up to like the fourth grade. Then we moved back, and that was on the east coast. We moved to the west coast. School, the price of schooling. Uh, went through the roof, so they my parents could only afford to get me back into public school then. But I remember growing up, and whenever they talked about Friday the 13th, in my religious groups, they talked about it being unlucky because there were 13 people at the Last Supper, and then the and that was a Thursday night, and then the following day, which was a Friday, Jesus was crucified. But, um, there's so many other things I think about. Uh, to this day, I still, uh, you know, people always, they, superstitious days and holidays, people always want to lump the witches in there. And I always find that funny. <laughs> um, I, I think of a great story a woman told me one time. She was from the Aran Islands. And she said, you know, we have witches that you can go to for help on our islands. They're good, but they still can. The end result can be uh, some may look at as being not so good, but they can have they can be close to, to families and clans. And she told a story about many witches out there. If you have somebody, a loved one who's um, dying of an incurable disease and there's they're not old, if they were old, they probably would let them just you know, move on to the next journey. But if they were young and felt they still had a lot of life ahead of them, they were dying of an incurable disease, they could call on the local village witch who was close to them, and she would do what they referred to as a transfer of, of illness, where whatever she did, she'd go out, pull a certain herb from, she would see the person, then she would go out, pull a certain herb from the ground, sit on her knees on the side of the road, and the first person that came by that she got eye-to-eye -eye contact with, she could transfer the disease to that person. And probably, and they say like within 24 hours, as the sick person is getting better and better, the person that got the hit with the transfer is getting sicker and sicker, and then that person eventually takes on all of the disease, passes the way, and the other person's um, healthy again. Right. Now, this is a favor done by the witch, but it came at the cost of whatever the person was that she <laughs> transferred that to. So this woman told me to this day, it, where I'm from, if you're driving down the road and up ahead, you, you don't drive very fast. You're always kind of looking around the corners. But if you see a woman on her knees on the side of the road, she said it, it takes a brave person to drive by that woman because it even almost seems like you can't keep your eyes off of her, but people will stop, they'll U-turn, they'll drive miles and miles and miles out of their way to go a roundabout way to get to where they were going just so they don't have to drive by that 
woman kneeling on the side of the road. Wow. Does that kind of stuff sound <laughs> over the over the top to you? Or being a witch is is that is that a very probable and believable story to you? I'll tell you where I come from. That's not acceptable behavior. So I would say no. From my perspective, we don't do stuff like that. But coming from people who are probably very entity controlled and not in a very high state of consciousness and low witchcraft, um, you know, low order kind of whatever you want to call it, black magic beyond the illusion of color, black magic. But um, the idea is, yeah, to project negativity or, or destroy people's lives and take innocent lives. I think that's uh, I think that people do do that. I think there's some bad, bad people out there in the craft. I think there's some bad people everywhere. But yeah, I don't think they think twice about trying to take somebody out. Quite honestly, this I've heard of voodoo hitmen and everything else. I will say that's why I fight the good fight. You know, I'm the different. I'm I'm like, I don't want to yeah, say Glenda the good witch, but I'm the different one. Okay. And I can walk in and I've always been like that. I've always had like the Harry Potter free, you know, kind of frequency where witches, most witches do not like me at all. But I know more about the craft in different worlds than they'll ever know. And I find that they should be very careful how they do things like that to take somebody's life uh, they don't know just because they're doing some kind of a weird ritual. And then of course uh, that person suffers. There's, there's a karmic patterning there. There's an entanglement there that they're gonna be held accountable for at some point. So I think all kinds of weird curses or whatever you wanna call them, bad energy, bad mojo, bad behavior. Yes, I think that can happen. I, I don't promote it in any formula. Um, and I'd say anything is possible with some people. The more I get to know different people in, in different communities, I would say that I'm very surprised that they are uh, not very evolved, not very knowledgeable and very hostile when it comes down to wanting to polarize and attack each other for no reason whatsoever. And I'm talking about the craft. So I'm very atypical, um, but I've been, you know, besides being a high priestess and a witch, I am alchemically changed on various levels. And also, you know, I've been baptized like three times too, and that didn't hurt. So um, <laughs> that's a long story. <laughs> yeah, you are you are a one of a kind. I've never met anyone like you. You you changed. I, I never had any ill will or any bad feelings towards anybody, uh, but you changed my whole years ago when we first met. You changed my whole um, uh, belief system and outlook and thinking process when it comes to witches. And I still talk to people all the time in my field that get really mad at me that I have friends that are. That I still occasionally, you know, will uh, get invitations and go out on a ghost hunt or that I have friends that are psychics, that I have friends that are witches. Um, is, um, is, it get, is it dramatically different or does it all get lumped together like Wiccans, pagans, witches and witchcraft, um, voodoo, southern hoodoo, uh, magic with a K? Is all of that? related or dramatically different everyone i think they're all different especially now remember I, I mentioned how witchcraft has been hijacked all of those areas have been hijacked too so you don't know what you're getting you know you know what you're getting when it comes down to a high priestess a high priest a witch um initiation whatever we don't know really they're in their own little secret societies they have their own little rituals and that's okay that's fine but you know what they're doing as a group in a collective if they're entity controlled that's another scenario um as i've said i i, I look at them nowadays and um I don't support a lot of that. I don't support that kind of behavior because I have a high protocol for alchemy and, and high priestess witchcraft. Um, and I consider myself more than a witch. I'm a mystical scientist. I'm a lot of other things. But what, I keep the benchmark very, very high. And I find that um, just from my own surveilling, um, not that I'm trying to be nosy, um, just my own observations of others, that I've watched uh, a type of a, it's, it's not even sincerity. I don't see any sincerity connected to their belief systems, their path. I think they're just using it because they think it's cool or they've watched too many movies in California. Oh, excuse me, California, Hollywood. Uh, but the idea behind that is, you know, um, just the idea behind, um, you know, that kind of fake it to make it thing. So, yeah, I um, I know where you're coming from. I really do. And I, I totally uh, can resonate with that. I, I find that I can't trust anybody in the craft unless I really know who they are and they've been vetted. Wow, that's a shame. And yeah. I'm, the, I'm the same way. I'm, I'm ashamed to say it. It's like I've been uh, had opportunities to work with people in my field and uh, you know, I come from uh, a religious belief system. You're not supposed to judge. But I've also learned the hard way that many of the things I come up against, it's life and death. And mm -hmm. it's like you have to, you have to over the top 150% have complete trust in these people that you work a case with. Trust them with your very life. Or if there's any doubt there whatsoever, what you go up against knows that, and they immediately attack it and pick it apart and just destroy a team. 
Right. So, um, yeah, it, it opens it's them up shame. to entity too. I mean, excuse me, I'm going to talk over you, but it does open them up to entity control as well. So, I mean, you have to know who you're dealing with and the groups you're around. Absolutely. Well, listen, somebody else sent me something, reminded me of you, and I'm going to read it real quick. And then we're going to talk about Friday the 13th. Okay. It says Friday the 13th, the secret power of Friday 13th, a 14th century cover up. Friday the 13th is actually good luck, and it is associated with the 13 cycles of the moon in a lunar year. This is why a woman has 13 cycles a year and ovulates on the 13th day. In 1487, free thinking and divine female energy was suppressed and labeled witchcraft by Heinrich Kramer. He sounds like a winner. Who went forth to burn many healers on the stake due to forced ignorance and a hatred for powerful female leaders. This hatred for powerful female leaders is why Friday the 13th is actually a spiritual day of enlightenment, divine feminine energy, and healing that should be sacred instead of hated. Mm, that's well said. I well love said. that. Yeah. Um, talk to me about these weird supposed uh, paranormal drive buys that I was experiencing that were unlike any others, and I was told it could be transgenerational oh, oh, curse ancestral um vengeance by mm -hmm. possibly somebody related to uh, a witch or a falsely accused person of witchcraft back in the mm -hmm. day well that's interesting now though, if we go in that area because i can also say it could be something like surveilling with shadow people connected into something which is gaslighting and gang stalking with technology but that's another area um some of the stuff coming in with genetic lineage or cellular memory would mean that if you have somebody, uh, say there has been tribes or or clans that were really going back and forth and back and forth, and the bloodlines get entangled to such a degree with um, each other, taking each other out, at some point, or curses, whatever, um, at some point there's going to be something surfacing at, to some degree where it would have to be looked at and cleared, or at least transmuted alchemically. And that's where we clear vows and contracts. We do something to, to, to get that energetic out of there so it's not stuck anymore. So that these, uh, whatever you want to call them, I call them more like parallel bleed through because to me it's like an energetic bleed through. Uh, something like that can be cleared out easily enough through a, a thousand contracts or just uh, acknowledgement and gnosis and transmuting it alchemically. But I, I don't um, discount anything like that. I think that a lot of people that are fighting today are fighting from bloodlines of old generations. Uh, but the thing is, they've got to get over that. And the, and the way to get over that is to transmute it and ascend out of it. A lot of the time, our ancestors have already moved on. We, they've already ascended. They're not. They're not stuck. They're not there haunting anybody. Most of the time they might visit you. But my, my point is that there's none of this. This should not be going on here. So people need to look at that and see. Um, now, I don't know if we cover that specifically, but I might have talked to you about the vials and contracts and also the idea behind uh, the surveilling because you do things that are very unique in your own way and very high profile. And that can also put you on the radar for more shadow people type things as well. Um, but those aren't necessarily bad. They're just kind of like more like trackers. That's what I see. Very interesting. Um... Well, let me get to some of your, your fan questions before uh, I get in trouble here. Uh-oh. I say it every week. <laughs> let me make sure everybody knows how to get a hold of you. You've got okay. two two one you've got two coven pages. But I should have one. Well, Blue Star Fortress, yeah. Yeah, then, I uh, saw Blue Star Fortress and Boulder Salem, which is Black Hat Society. Yeah. Cool pages. For mm -hmm. all of the talented, gifted, um, witches out there or want to be not wannabes but want to be witches that uh, aspire to be like you that admire you um if they're interested in going to either one of these pages and joining uh what's your recommendation and what does uh an aspiring young next generation solaris blue raven what will they get out of that the pages, actually, I'll be honest with you, I haven't been keeping up with those pages as much as I should. They are out there and accessible. Uh, most of the time when people really want to get involved in, in more information connected to the occult, spirituality, and witchcraft, they can go over to my Patreon where I actually do videos now. And I'm actually doing instructional videos and some other kinds of videos just about consciousness and philosophies. And that would definitely put them on the path of exploration so they're not getting you know swayed into one way of thinking. But also, uh, what what is witchcraft and, and the foundation behind it besides these other types of areas where you have a specific um, style or craft from lineage, uh, just kind of more nebulous with the information. So they can go there. Very, very cool. 
Yeah. You have two one you have a wonderful website. WWW you got two wonderful websites. www.solarisblueraven all one word dot webs dot com. You also have www nightshadowanomalydetectives.com both websites are very cool um oh my gosh your host of hyperspace that's yeah. been that's older than my show on monday nights uh, you uh, okay. are also <laughs> even older than that you are the show the host of raven stars witching hour midnight mm -hmm. sun saturday nights that's even older uh, so you must be doing something right. Uh, plenty of fans, plenty of followers. Both shows are doing phenomenal. They can see you Friday nights um, mm -hmm. with Hyperspace. Mm -hmm. They can see you Saturday nights with Raven Stars Witching Hour. Um, what do you, what do you, you know, I still don't have a clue what I'm doing on this show or my oh. Monday night show. I think that's probably why I still do it. Uh, I just, I don't. I care, but I don't. I just sit down. I'm me. I go for it. It, it works. amazes me. People like, you know, still. It's real. It's organic. That's what we need. What yeah. do you love? What's What makes you so passionate about both shows you do? Because they're, they're, they're actually very different. Yeah, they can be. Uh, I think most of it is just exploring other people's opinions and ideas and experiences, uh, interviewing people I'm interested in or their work or their research that comes to mind. And just having a real conversation, kind of like what you do in the sense of it being more spiritually organic and just letting the energy move and see where we go with it. Uh, nothing is scripted per se. It's just about communication and letting people have a voice, which I'm really big about because I want people to be able to speak and communicate. If they're new authors, if they have anything that they want to promote, I'm, I try to get them out there, uh, you know, and just communicate their their ideas. Uh, I don't want brilliant minds to go, you know, to the South and just, or South, you know, and just disappear. I want people to be out there. So that's probably one of the reasons I do what I do. God bless you for, for that. That's, oh, God bless uh, you too. I don't leave answer but um I, I know you mean that too uh what else does some of your fans want to know um oh my gosh i think i've already asked you all of these well, what did you think about the lame this uh unidentified Excuse aerial phenomena disclosure by the department uh, what was that all it's about? worthless yeah it's worthless yeah. I, I would say it's just a sideshow we we have more information on disclosure than they'll ever have at this point they're so compartmentalized that there's nothing they can bring to the plate but I think they're trying to control the narrative. I think that's part of it, you know? So, uh, you know, taking everybody away from their own thoughts and state of consciousness and information and bringing it and pulling it up back over to DOD and, and let them control the narrative once again, say, oh, you know, we'll be in charge now. No, they're not. Sorry. Um, that, that They lost power a long time ago. I think they're going to get it back. So it's my two cents. Um, what do you got planned for the rest of this year? I may, uh, I've been invited to some wonderful paranormal conferences, paranormal conventions. I'm a little nervous on how things might be looking at the end of the year with with just the way the world is. We've got a, a big one coming here to uh, Vegas. I know that's not too far from you, but uh, you get those invitations all the time. What do you got on the radar that you <laughs> might be doing where people, because, you know, so people funny. go, they want to see you in person. They want to talk to you. They want to yeah. touch you, which is not advisable in this day and age, but nevertheless they want to do that um what can you tell all your fans and followers where they might where they might be able to actually see you this year oh well I, i'm not sure because i don't have anything scheduled right now to be honest i've been doing a lot of virtual presentations i've done that on and off um so i'm not sure where i'll be in the space time but just check in with me and you'll be able to find that through my radio shows or my website i'll promote it um i had somebody say this to me the other day and i thought that, that was so cool. And he's been doing what I do way longer than I have. And I admire him and respect him. He said, you know, the longer I do this and the more I learn, the less I know. And I'm always, God created me the way I am. If I get scared of something, there has to be a reason why he's put that in me. I get over it very quickly with his help or her help. God could be a female or both or everything. Um, after all this time, does, you're so knowledgeable, does, at times, does having all of this knowledge tend to ever be slightly overwhelming? And does any of it you wish you didn't know? Or is there anything that scares Solaris Blue Raven? 
No, that's a great question. I, I would say I'm not snobbish and weird, but I'd say I'm not really afraid of anything, to be honest with you. I've been able to navigate through various things. And whenever I feel like I get any type of overwhelming, I just override and just you know go right through it. Um, it's, it's hard to describe in a sense of, uh, gee, I really don't know. To be honest with you, it's a great question, but I, I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know how to answer that. Really. It's okay. That's okay. No <laughs> answers. is. That's okay. Is there anything you want to, like I said, you can talk about anything you want to talk about. If they take the show down, they take it down. Is well, there anything won't. you have on your mind that you want to share that you think is important for the masses to hear, regardless of what uh, what branch under the paranormal community they may be a part of or not, or if it's just people that have a passion to tune into shows like this and listen to people like us chat, mm -hmm. um, but aren't really involved other than being observers anything on your mind that is really really calling to you to just to get out there i think the biggest thing is for people to wake up you know and don't be slept with a what i call a false programming or false matrix they want to snap out of that game as far as the being slept uh being in this stasis where they're not aware and, and coherent of their own multidimensional design and also connecting into their higher self and their spirituality Whatever path you walk, I think it's very, very important that people stay on the path of spirit, be good hearted people, be as kind as you can and keep ascending because that's the only way they're going to get out of here really is evolution, frequency, consciousness. It's all correlating to the same thing. So that's the biggest thing that I see. And more uh, so than ever, I see more more feuding, more spiking, more entity control. And we talked about that earlier, the, this crazy snapping that people are doing. They're just attacking each other. You know, I don't I don't hate my fellow man. And the illusion of space time. I don't understand why people can't can't just back up for a minute. And maybe that's the spiritual work they need to do, meditation, prayer, whatever it is, to get them in a space of being able to coexist. That would be a really good idea. And then also realizing that when they're being had, when they're being played, when there's being a program running, insofar as just being, um, you know, uh, an obfuscation or a smoke screen. You know, I can use various examples, but we don't want to get your show taken down. My point is being aware and alert, and also staying very spiritual and shielded and protected and strong. Stay strong in your power, but be compassionate. That's my suggestion. I think there's a, a a a big. I think we're all being well, maybe not you, but I and I'm the first one to admit <laughs> that uh, I, I probably have had. I probably have thought something that I'm encountering was one thing, and it just made me believe it was that, and it was something entirely different. Um, I have people in my field that believe that angels and demons. That's it. Ghosts are just demons that are fooling you to make you think they're ghosts, and that I've fallen for that trap. That could be, uh, you know, I can't, you know, I can't prove ghosts exist. I do believe they exist. And mm -hmm. I think they're different than demons and angels are completely different. But um, I'm the first to admit that I could very easily uh, have been duped. I think there's some things going on now that are duping all of us. I found it interesting. You mentioned something about ancestors have already moved on. Does that, do you, are you not a big uh, believer in past lives, for instance? Oh, I believe in past lives, but I, I find that at some point they keep ascending and they just keep moving on. And in that we hold them on through our own emotional, you know, our own emotional issues. So we want to pull them in because we miss them. We bring their energy back into this world um, even more so than ever. But my, my point is, I think that just, they're navigating and they're traveling and they're exploring and, and they can come in and check in with you. But I don't think they're in a, in a place where they're being held. Um, so that they're always just very, very close to this world. I feel like they're very um, expanded in the cosmos. Where do you believe, if you if you have a, an opinion on this, I would be interested to hear. Where do you believe that option of the of the past life comes in? Uh, I've I've had people like I told this story a couple of times in the show already, where a girl was driving down the street, told her husband to pull over because she just had to go up to this house. She didn't know why, but she had to. Went up there, knocked on the door. The people answered. They were shocked to see her. She, they didn't know each other, but she said, you know, introduced herself. I'm sorry I had to stop and knock on the door. I don't know what the urge was. And the woman that answered the door said, it's because you're haunting this place. So hmm. that's wow. crazy. And then Sharon sees me here sitting all the time at my desk, and I'm some the real me somewhere else. Right. I remember house. that. Um, then you have past lives. Some people feel that they're, you know, haunting. They can see them, the ghost of themselves from a past life haunting a location, as with any other spirit there. But where do you feel the opportunity comes 
to decide if you even want to do this again. I'm so looking forward to, you know, I've been told that I knew Jesus 2,000 years ago. I'm looking forward to seeing him again. And I don't know if I want to, you know, come back on this physical journey, although it seems to be a really ch- cherished thing, life. Physical mm-hmm. life seems to be a very right. cherished, wanted, sought after thing. Um, mm-hmm. But I also feel very much the opposite way. I don't hope it happens after Sharon gets home a little bit with lunch that I move on to my next journey, but I'm not afraid of it. And I know it's Mm -hmm. going to be beautiful. Where do you feel the opportunity comes in to make a decision? Do you want to continue to ascend or do you want to try this over again? Because you you missed out on a few things that you got some lessons to learn that you could might be able to or, or not. I think it's optional. I think people, if they choose to incarnate, still incarnated. It may not even be on this world. It might be on a different earth star, so to speak, a different parallel world that looks like this one, but more refined, more ascended and more productive and, and spiritual in my opinion. So I think you can incarnate or, or and enter onto a timeline, so to speak, in, in various forms anywhere. Uh, it depends on it, what you choose to do. I feel like everybody's at the end of the spiral here. And it's like, if you didn't get it this time, it's almost like you really can't. So I'm just saying it. That's just my opinion that they really should be on uh, a very strong path of their consciousness and spirit and understand what's happening here so that they're able to navigate. Because if they're in the disconnected and they leave this world disconnected, then the ghosts that you see that you're trying to help all the time are the exact same people that are that are there, that are living right now, that will probably wind up in that position because they haven't done the work. There'll be disorientation. They won't be able to get out. Um, if they have faith in nothing, nothing's going to be there. See, as you manifest as you go, uh, it is given to you according to your belief many, many times. So you're manifesting reality through consciousness, stream of consciousness. You have to build the bridge. There is no bridge for some of these God, people. You, you get what you just said gave me goosebumps. If you don't have any faith in anything, nothing's going to be there. It's just over. Some people say, "Well, fine, it'll just be over." I won't know that it's over because it'll be over. But uh, my my uh, hunger for more after this is too much to want to even to to want to even think about feeling that way. That's and you've helped so many people too. I appreciate you, by the way. Thank you for all that you do. I know you work so hard on so many. I levels. appreciate you so more, you. and I love you more. So <laughs> oh, there. <you> <laughs> um, yes, I do. I do love you. <laughs> so you I love um, you too. Give Lex a big hug and a kiss for me. I'm so oh, well. glad he's still with us. I wasn't going to ask you about it because I hadn't seen you talk about him in such a long time. And I'm yeah. I'm still not over recently losing one of my Mastiffs. So I didn't want to bring it up if something happened. But it, this is probably the best part of the show today was hearing that your beloved Lex is still with you. Yeah. Kicking. Thank you. Um, give, him a big, give him a big hug and a kiss for me. I will. He's breathing heavy in the background. So if you get the background noise, that's him. Thank <laughs> you so much for spending an hour out of your busy Friday the 13th afternoon with me and my viewers, I can feel the love. They all appreciated seeing you and hearing from you. Um, I think about you always. You're on the prayer list. I pray for you Thank all the you. time. God bless you. Have a great God weekend. And um, thank you so much. I'll talk to you soon, okay? Okay. Thank you so much. I love you so much. Right. Take care. Good night, everybody. Right. Good night. Good night. Brothers and sisters, Solaris Blue Raven. Um. Witches and revs can get along. We can all get along. So, having said that, next week, just leave the seatbelt on all week. Have somebody else do, you know, do your weekly chores and your go to work for you and stuff. Don't even unbuckle the seatbelt and get up because next week's guest, a very, a, I don't know anybody else like her, a lot likes a large blue raven. Morgan Daimler, Friday the 20th. Morgan Daimler. She's an all things paranormal and elemental authority, big time authority on fairies and that whole middle world. She's a fascinating person. She'll be here next Friday. I want to take an opportunity to thank all of you for tuning in. Without all of you, I don't have a show. Thank you, Adrian Hart, my producer, aka Ghost Granny. Um, I couldn't do this show without her. She's a big wig over at the Paranormal United Network, among many of the things she does. Having said that, thank you, Paranormal United Network, for simulcasting my show. Guys, if you like my show, go over to the Paranormal United Network Facebook Live page. The lineup's phenomenal. A lot of shows over there way better than mine. So check that out. You'll thank me later. God bless you all. 
Stay blessed. Stop the anger. Stop the violence. Good night, Jack. Good night, dog. Good night, Harold. Rest in peace. Good night, Ernie. Good night, Bill. Good night, Dan. I love you all. God bless you all. Peace.